Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palitska International, new artisan educator here, and today we are going to create a beautiful one-stroke flowers. Have a wee preview of them in here. An absolute yes, stunning effect, and I hope you really enjoy watching this tutorial. Let's start. <laughs> So we are going to have fun with some one stroke and that's the design I have prepared for you. Now I'll show you how to recreate this look. I'm actually glad because I've got uh, bits and pieces of the paints, like each color left like tiny bit on the end so I can just use them and get rid of those uh, empty ones. They have been in with me for years actually. Now 216 almost naked color. And I feel like it will really go with this design and the time of the year as well. Uh, so really nice color so I'm just applying it in and then cure it I'm curing all the gel polishes uh, on the clients so that's two different things on the tips I'm curing usually uh, 30 seconds and that's plenty on the clients I like to give it 60 seconds cure um, just to make sure there is no troubles and they last them long long time and so those the gels I cured them always 60 seconds as well cook it this one and then that one I'm um, applying it a little bit thicker just to save the time so I could uh, only work with the one layer normally again I would apply two layers nice and thin and cook all, each of those layer and then the next color which we are going to use is a black ink and a drop of the uh, of it on the mixing palette just so I can perfect the line which we will create it so I'm painting those black line and I really love this black it's like a really nice and highly pigmented Okay, and then using the thin brush we are just going to perfect this line so it's nice and nice and straight so we'll go about halfway And then once I'm happy, I'm going to give it a cure. Quickly the same on the thumb. So this time other side. And then just perfect the line. I've got the sunshine coming up, so quickly just redo it because the product will start curing and then cook it. Top coat. So let me hide my brush I quickly have to remove the gel polish in there. 
and cover it. <laughs> it is the window. We we will uh, we just uh, want to find out what will be a best solution uh, for an extra light, so we can completely black out like the window because uh, I'm just sitting on front of the window and I can feel it like when I'm working I have to really speed up because on the sunny days uh, the product is just curing on me when I apply it at on and I can't leave the brushes even for a couple seconds because they will be just uh, cured and they could just go to the bin. So quickly apply the top coat in there. And you guys know, again, I could use the matte top coat, which I've got here with me, like in here. So I could use matte top coat, but I have just used the normal top coat because I like to give it cup, like buff before I start painting. And then give it a cure. Uh, I'm going to squeeze out the paint, and as I say, excuse that, but I really wanted to use those paints right down to the end, um, and then obviously uh, bin the packages. So for painting, I like to use the baby wipes. I have just took a couple out. First of all, it's easier for me to squeeze out the, uh, the paints from the tubes. So I've got a bit of green, and this green is called number 28 <laughs> and can put it on the side then the white I think white I've got it at the end yes so I'm not trying to even squeeze it out like this I will just take a spatula and pick up the black eh, white <laughs> cameraman is laughing don't laugh don't laugh. No, the flesh, and this one is definitely the last design, like guys, I'm fishing for it. Like, um, I will even add a drop of water to this paint. And then straight to bean, like, oh, maybe not. Don't laugh. Like, no. I mean, I could probably do another five or ten designs out of it. Um, and honestly, guys, I have got this paint like, gosh, years, like that. some of them are, that's the first one which I ever pick up. And like, I have been doing nails for, um, since 2005. So magenta, you guys know this is my favorite. So I just need the drop of it. Now the brown, brown, um, I have dyed on brow as well. So there is hardly anything in there, but I'm just going to pick it up. I, I feel like still lots of life in them, you know? And then the black. Oh, that's black paint concentrate. Oh, no, I don't want that. Okay, let's start painting those beautiful designs. So we are going for the middle one. Couple scratches. Really just uh, to smooth it out like and have a perfect surface uh, for painting. Clean it. And let me do it this one as well so and then clean it and this one is ready for painting as well i went fast about the lines because we are going to hide like half of it anyway but the main thing is the bottom and top is nice. And we are going to use the Demaster brush. That's a one stroke. Let me hide this one. That's a one stroke brush for a level two, which is tiny. And to compare, this is a one stroke level one. So you can see the difference in a difference in the size of those two brushes. I prefer no. I, it's hard to say. No, I cannot say I prefer it. Depending on what I'm doing, I prefer a different one. I'm picking up light pink and dark pink, and I'm picking up a brown. And it's unusual for me to do some designs with the browns, but I felt like because it is some kind of autumn-ish design, I'm going to use those colors. And then we are going to paint some flowers. So just with the touches of the brush, be creating some petals. Basically, the slower you paint, the nicer results you will get. 
like one stroke doesn't like to be rushed. And I'm just doing like a touches of the brush. Now I'm going into the darker combination of the colors. So uh, pink and magenta as well. But I didn't clean my brush, so I've got those dirtiness on it. Like I don't want those flowers to be pure, uh, pure clear color. Like I want to have a mixture of different ones. Okay, and painting some petals underneath of that. Now pink and brown. So I'm just going to have a combination of different colors. And what was my biggest problem when I start painting one stroke? Like uh, sometimes I was feeling like the brush is too big and I'm not able to press it strong enough to leave enough paint or, um, or to get the shape of the flowers. Um, so with this brush, because it's so tiny, I can really press it harder and I can get a nicer shape of the petals. So we're painting like different colors of the browns. I will do one with the magenta here as well and a pink. Just so it is visible on the other color as well. So pink, magenta. Again, the nicer flowers, like I'm talking about extremely nice flowers, that's the flowers which are um, twice colored. So like you would do one layer and then you would do a second layer just to get those perfect look. But that's the background flowers. Clean my brush, dry it out, and then let's do, actually I'm missing some yellow. Uh, let's do some leaves in there. I like this color because it's kind of uh, like an autumn color combination. And then some leaves. We'll go to the top and then come back. In some places I want this brown to be coming through the green color. And then some leaves in here. And then again, brown, just some, some leaves are darker. Because we're doing autumn sit. I'm going to quickly paint a couple leaves on this one, since I've got the, those kind of colors on my brush. And also you can see it, how I'm painting the leaves. So the brush is at the nice angle. I'm going to the top, then change the angle, bring it down, change the angle of the brush, and then close the leaf. Okay, one more time. So if I touch with the brush, this is what the brush is leaving. So touch, touch, go to the top, Come down, change the angle. And now to this touches, add those kind of massaging motion. So don't shake your hand too much, but then it's hard to control it. So I'm massaging like, massaging the paint to create a nice leaves. I 
actually it's easier to do it without of uh, talking through it because then I can just twist it at the right angles and the tiny one in here sometimes you can just do it like pull the brush just like this and that will give you a nice leaf so press hard and then press light <coughs> try it try it different things like that's what it is all um, about like trying different kind of movements Now here I'm going to do it slightly bigger petal. And another one. Couple more. So I'm just adding a single petals now to fill up the empty space. Okay, leave it to dry and now we are going to highlight some flowers and add the detail just to make some pretty design. So I have cleaned my brush again and I'm going to pick up a drop more of the magenta one. Yellow and pink. And this time I wanted it to be more watery. So it doesn't leave much, uh, lots of color, just a little bit. So I will have like a one color which is underneath and then this one coming through it. Just so some flowers are kind of popping out more. And this one as well. So very, there is like very little product on my brush, very watery, and I'm just quickly painting over it. And same in here. So I just want this one to pop out more. I would say it's more like a colored water now I'm, I'm using. That's plenty. So clean my brush so it doesn't dry. And then let's do the detail work. So I've got those brown color. And I'm going to roll my brush into a nice point to paint a couple of the branches. I've got really nice and thin brush. OK, 
Okay, same on this one. Even if it's hardly visible, you can do it uh, on the black as well. Those couple of lines. Dotting tool. And we are going to do some dots. So I've got the magenta mixed with brown. Couple dots. Same on this one. Dots are always fantastic filler for the designs. Clean the dotting tool and then use the yellow. To add a couple yellow dots. Okay. And then on this one, I'm also using the brown. And a white. I'll leave it to dry and then we can apply the top coat and you can see it how beautiful it is like once we apply the top coat. Now I had dilemma. <clears throat> I wasn't sure do I want a shiny or a matte and because we have done it most of the designs shiny I went for matte so I'm just using the matte top coat over it to protect our design. But I really had dilemma. I wasn't sure like uh, because I always do one stroke with the shiny top coat because I feel like everything pops out. Uh, but I wanted to do it something slightly different so you can guys see it. Actually, let me show you this one. You can guys see it, uh, the difference in between the shiny and the matte. Um, so shiny is more vibrant, cameraman says like shiny is good. <laughs> but because it's the autumn time, I don't know, I wanted those... Yes, shiny looks better because it's more standing out. But at the same time, because it's autumn time, I really wanted to get those kind of matte looks. So you can decide, guys, yourself if you prefer those matte or shiny look. Uh, at least I have shown you both options. And uh, let's see how this set looks when it's uh, fully applied on the... Yeah, and matte in here, matte as well. Yes, shiny is nice. I don't know that I did wrong or good doing, uh, doing matte. Let me know down below in the comments what would you use, shiny or a matte top coat. Uh, but yeah, too late. I use matte. Like I, I always do shiny, always do shiny, so it has to do it matte. And um, that's another one. And then I did this one shiny. Oh my goodness. No, that one has to be matte. I'm getting confused. So this one is going to be matte. I have to give it a couple scratches uh, so the uh, top coat is sticking in into the next layer. As you know, guys, gels doesn't stick into shiny surface. So quickly matte top coated. 
Yeah, all set has to be matte. And I want to know what you would choose. <laughs> <laughs> we know cameraman wants shiny. I want matte. <laughs> shiny, shiny. And then I know most of you will choose shiny, but we always do shiny. I like it in shiny. <laughs> no, I like it in matte. <laughs> no, it has to be matte. It has to be matte. It has to be matte. Okay, so this one is matte as well. And that's what we have created today. So you guys know one stroke is one of my favorite techniques. Uh, but, uh, oh, I need to show you something as well. So that's what we have created with the one stroke. But I show you what else I have painted for you guys. I have painted those cute butterfly. Uh, so there is, there will be tutorial coming in uh, on our channel for those cute butterfly as well. And today we have done the flowers. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see it. Uh, and I'm sending you lots of glittery hugs. Bye for now.